2 Kings chapter 15. And the, the topic is unstable amongst the area of Israel. Now, tonight we're going to be talking about, it's going to be many kings that the book of uh, uh, chapter 15 is talking about. Many kings. And all these kings, and God for prophets, God uh, had, I think, Amos uh, uh, possessed to prophesy that there are going to be many kings. And they're going to be killing one another. Mm -hmm. to take the mm -hmm. So I'm going to begin with, chap uh, with verse 1, and I'm going to begin to read. It says, In the 27th year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, As Asclav, the son of Amazah, king of Judea, began to reign. He was 16 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jericho, Jeroboam, Jeroboam, of Jerusalem. And, and he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, according mm -hmm. to all that his father, Am Amazar, Amazar, had done. Nevertheless, the high place was not always, was not taken away. The people still sacrificed and made offerings on the high places. And the Lord touched the king so that he was a leper to the day of his death, and he lived in a separate house. And Jephthah, the king's son, was over the household, governing the people of the land. I'm going to stop right there. Now, I couldn't pronounce his name right, but Amazon, the king of Judah, began to reign. He was 16 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. Now, my whole point is this, he did what his father did. Oh, uh, Dr. Jolene. Okay. He did what his father did. And his father had, he, the people were making sacrifice to pagan God, to pagan God. And he continued to allow the people to do this. Mm -hmm. He continued to do it. I know he was 16 years old. He was 16 years old when he began to when he was king. Amen. Mm -hmm. But let let me go on. What did you stop at that? I verse uh, five. Sorry, at verse five. I stopped at verse five. Would you like to go ahead and read from six all the way to twelve? Okay. And the rest of the acts of Angaria and all that he did are not written in the book of the Chronicles. Or are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the King of Judah? So Azariah slept with his father, and they buried him with the father in the city of David. And Jotham, son of, his son reigned in his stead. And the eighth, in the thirty, in the thirty and eighth year of Azariah, king of Judah, did Zechariah, the son of Jeroboam, reign over Israel in Samaria six months. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, mm -hmm. as his father had done. He departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebai, who made Israel to sin. And Shalom, the son of Jabesh, conspired against him and smote him before the people, and killed him, and reigned in his stead. And the rest of the acts of Zechariah, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicle of the kings of Israel. Was this the word of the Lord, which he spoke unto Jehu, saying, Your son shall sit on the throne of Israel unto the fourth generation? And so it came to pass. Oh, there it is. Yeah, you okay. Yeah. Ah, uh, twelve. Amen. Okay. So you have any comments on Dr. John? Yeah, I wanted to read where it says, uh, Second Kings ten and thirty. Second Kings ten and thirty. That was just what the, the yeah, letter is. Uh, just going back to Second Kings yeah. thirty. Mm -hmm. 31? Yeah, chapter, uh, chapter 15. Thank you, Tim. And I was just going back to what the Lord had said, okay. and that's found in 2nd 
Kings chapter 10, verse 30. And it says, um, And the Lord said unto Jehu, Because you have done well and have executed that which is right in my eyes, and have done unto the house of Ahab according to all that was in my heart. And your children of the four generations shall sit on the throne of Israel. I just wanted to point out how when we read once before, we yeah. were studying that the Lord, you know, his word don't change. And he told mm -hmm. that he that his kids would be, yeah. his generation would be there to, I mean, his, his family would be there to the fourth generation. And it's just awesome to see God say something and you go back and reference it to mm -hmm. what he said, yeah. according to his word. And it said, but Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord, God of Israel, with all his heart. For he departed not from the sin of Jeroboam, which made Israel to sin. You know how Pastor, we always say that uh, the company that you keep sometimes, mm -hmm. the things that they do, you know, you end up doing so. In other words, if you keep in company with people who are notorious and sinful, mm -hmm. not to say that, now we all sin, but we're talking about, you know, going outside the, uh, the law of the Lord. Yeah. And how you can get yourself in uh, some serious trouble. And Pastor, I know you already read over here where uh, the king ended up being uh, with leprosy. Yes. And to me, I remember, uh, uh, Minister Tyrone was teaching that one uh, evening, and he was giving a description of leprosy. So, and uh, and I was saying to him, I said, that's funny because I was going to read the description of leprosy. So when you look at the king where it says he actually died of leprosy, it was, uh, it's amazing because it's like a really serious disease. Yes, I mean, yes. stuff starts falling out of you, you know, you lose your yeah, hearing, you lose your sight, mm -hmm. and it's just really a, mm -hmm. a devastating disease, and not only is it a devastating disease. You also have to look at the history that we have taught to how they also have to be uh, put away. And I, I, you had to read that already. It says mm -hmm. right here that he was, you know, in uh, uh, other parts of the house. Right. So he had to be isolated. Mm -hmm. So isolation itself, Captain, what I want to say, is miserable. Yeah. You know, because sometimes when I, you know, like if I'm in the house by myself sometimes, I'm not miserable. But it's quiet in there. It's, I, I can't imagine a human being in that position for, so, for, for too long. Yes. Not that I'm miserable, but I'm just saying, just a, I can't mm -hmm. even imagine what it's like, but I just can only give a, just a little minute saying mm -hmm. that when, it's in the, when, you're house, when you're in the house by yourself, it is so quiet. So just imagine this, this king, you know, he's, he's never had the privilege of a television or a radio to mm -hmm. somewhat entertain him. You know, they had, you know, you know other little things to read, but at the end of the day, he wasn't entertaining. And I can, I can relate to that in isolation because years ago when I was in jail, I came from off jail, mm -hmm. years ago, they didn't have no radio, no TV, oh, okay. no, and wasn't nobody in the jail but me. And <laughs> I couldn't go nowhere, got nothing, just nothing right. like that. And that, mm -hmm. that's the isolation now. And you can't see, you don't know whether it's day or night. Right. You don't know whether it's day or night. Right, I can't imagine. And so also, I can relate to that. And then also, Captain, when it says seven right here, I remember reading at home where we're talking about you know how they said when he was buried in the city of David mm -hmm. uh, uh, amongst the other fathers? But they also said that according to the, uh, go back to the law, that he could, he wasn't actually placed with the rest of the kings that had died. He had, to, it was a little area that was set apart. Mm -hmm. So even in burial, you know, he still was not actually with the other kings according to the, the uh, commentary that I had read. Amen. Being that he had left the city. So I want to go back to verse 5. Okay. And the Lord touched the king so that he was a leper to the day of his death. And he lived in the temple house. But the Lord touched the Lord. So I, so what I was studying, why the Lord struck him with leprosy? Why the Lord struck him with Because he wanted to do the things that the priest was to do. And, that, that, and he was an arrogant king. He was an arrogant king, prideful, mm -hmm. because he had won a million dollars and stuff like that. And he did a lot of stuff for the children of Israel. But he still followed it in his part of footsteps, so he wanted to go make uh, a burn an incense before the Lord. Exactly. And that was a no no. That was only for the priest. And, and the priests tried to stop him. They tried to stop him. They said, Don't do that. That that is not your job. But he is he went and did it tried to do it anyway and God struck him with leprosy. God struck. Then even today when people tell us the right thing to do and then we choose to do our own, then we have the consequences. Sometimes we, a lot of people want to blame God or even blame the people. The consequences of what happened to them to mm -hmm. someone else. That's why we must follow instructions. Do the right thing. Exactly. Amen. And just, Go ahead. And just before that chapter where it says four, where it says, uh, save, the high, save that the high places were not removed. Back to what you said. Yes. He didn't even remove the high places. Right. He continued to allow that. And it says in my commentary right here, it says, from the, and it goes back to what you just said too about the sin. It says, from this we should learn how it grieves the Holy Spirit to have any abiding sin within our lives. The constant repetition of these statements represents the Holy Spirit warning us by our repetition of our own shortcomings. Mm -hmm. 
reminded us that these teams that come in from district, they would not, even when it was said that they were pretty good teams, yeah. but they still fell short because of what you said. They still mm -hmm. wanted to, they never slow down the high place. The they still was allowing uh, their very the to be an idolatry. Yeah, no, they out of it. They, they left them up. And like I was starting out saying this evening, yeah, the book, chapter 15 talks about like five kings of Israel. And each one of them started out right, but they ended up going wrong and worshiping uh, idols. So we're going to start, you just left off at 13. Someone read from 13. Well, perhaps it showed that they're wavering too, you know, because they were yeah. good things, but they were doing the other things, so they were wavering. Would you call that art? Uh, we we'll call it something else. This doesn't work for me. Uh, right in the same. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You shot. Yeah. Yeah, right yeah. yeah. yeah, I ended at 12. Okay. Somebody can start at 13. Someone will read from 13 to 20. Solomon, the son of Jabesh, began to reign in the ninth and thirtieth year of Uzziah. 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 Thank you. King of Judah. And he reigned a full month in Samaria. For Menahem, the son of Gedi, went up from Tezai and came to Samaria and smote Solomon, the son of Jabesh, in Samaria and killed him and reigned in his stead. And the rest of the acts of Solomon and his conspiracy, conspiracy, conspiracy which he made, behold, they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel. Then Menahem smote Shishak, Shishak and all that were therein, and the coast thereof from Shishak, because they opened not to him. Therefore he smote it. And all the women within who were with pure with child, he ripped up. In the nine and thirty year of Azariah, king of Judah began Menahem, the son of Gadis, that reigned over Israel, and reigned ten years in Samaria. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He departed not of all his days from the sin of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. And Paul, the king of Assyria, came against the land. And Menahem gave Paul a thousand talents of silver, silver that his hand might be with him to confirm the kingdom in his hand. And Menahem extracted the money of Israel, even of all the mighty men of wealth, of each man filthy, fifty people of silver, silver to give to the king of Assyria, so that the king of Assyria turned back and stayed not there in the land. Man. So he was, he was a, a notorious uh, moral <laughs> corrupted uh, pastor, Malik, 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 Menahem, Menahem. Yeah, now, uh, Shulam, what is his name? Shulam? Yeah, Shulam. Uh, now, it, this is, you know, we already talked about three, we talked about now three kings. Three kings that, that was in over Israel, over Judah. Now, Shulam, he didn't say about, well, I say about one month over Israel. <laughs> and they killed him. They killed him. And, and, and I believe, I believe all of them were, were young, were young age. All of them were young age. But I was, when I was reading this, I was looking at how they were doing. Now, this is authority that they have. Authority that they have. They were just taking authority and using it for their own means, for their own self. Yeah, and then, and then too, when he was authority too, because he got yeah. into this about assassinating somebody. Yeah. I mean, he's a notorious king. Yeah, these kings were killing. I killed him. I saved him. He was strong, they were killing. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Shulam didn't stay for one month, but I'm going to see where he is, where he killed him. He assassinated, he assassinated the one that killed all the women and the babies. Remember when? Okay. Uh, men and him. Yeah, okay. Yeah, then. Shulam, he killed him. And Shulam, the son of Jebet, and Samara, and put him, put him to death, and means in his place. I think they said, then Minion, the son of Jebet, came up 
from her and came to Samaria, and he took, no, he killed Judah. Minham killed Judah. But I was telling her, who did, who did uh, Shulam kill? That's what I was trying to say. But let's go on. Amen. But now, he, uh, he, he killed um, Zechariah. Okay, all right. Okay, yeah, here it is. Okay, your son was killed by uh, Menahem. Menahem killed Shua. Yeah. And, and Shua killed, killed Zechariah. Okay, here it is there in 3 verse 10. In verse 10, Shua, the son of Jerry, conspired against him and struck him down and his enemy and put him to death. And leave in his place. And Shulam didn't stay but one month. That's right. that, back to what I was saying. These kings, not to take power, they were killing one another. Mm -hmm. And even today, you find people are, are, are talking about one another in order to get their place. Making them look bad oh, in order to get their position. Mm -hmm. Lying on them and all that stuff. So, and the same thing, because you got to understand, you don't really have to kill a person with a knife or gun. Words can really destroy a person's spirit. It's to get too strong to where they don't go on and do it. And you find a lot of teenagers, and I think I heard on the news the other night that uh, a lot of young people are committing suicide. Mm -hmm. Committing suicide. I don't know whether it's because of what kids are saying to them or what people are saying to them. Or what the last night, I think they say it's because of the, since this pandemic in here. That's what they say. But what causes it, I, I don't even know. But I do know one thing, when you begin to put a person down with words, you kill that spirit. Mm -hmm. And they, they get to the place, they get to the place where they don't want to do nothing, don't want to be around no one. And I've seen kids like this. Amen? Amen. So, but uh, this king, a minute, I see, he was, he was, like you said, sir, how do you say that word, sir? Well, he was really, he felt, he, uh, women who were pregnant, oh. he just took yeah, that I baby, the and just ripped them up and took them, their babies out of them. I said, man. And this commentary says right here, one can see that the property of this man regarded the type of sin that he committed. Mm -hmm. You know, he was really wicked. And that's what, in verse 18, it says, and he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not depart right. all his days from all the sins of Jeroboam, right. the son of Nebuch, Nebuch which, which he made Israel to sin. Mm -hmm. And Pulam, Pulam, the king of Asia, came against the land, and Minna gave her a thousand talents of silver that he might help him to confirm his oath, his oath on the royal power. Look that's at that. That's conspiracy and bribery. Yeah. That is what I'm thinking about. By his way, he would remain in power. Can I read my commentary on that? Yes, my, yes. Thing, my commentary is that it is not coincidental that the first uh, distinct mention of Assyria in Scripture as an aggressive power is immediately following the account of the terrible sin of Menahem, even to the murdering of thousands of women and little children. By this time, Assyria had been raised to a great power for nearly a hundred years, a, a century, one thing, and had reached far beyond the, ri the river of Euphorus. Euphrates, even to Egypt. From here on, the his from here on, the history of two kings. From here on, the history of the two kingdoms of Israel and Judah is linked with that of Assyria and Babylon. So, but what is his name? Look at him. He was uh, he was doing things for his own purpose. Mm -hmm. He was he was, he was good. But he, he was, he was, he was, all, he was all bitter. Most all these people was ungodly. Was ungodly. But you got, but you got to look at this too. God sees all this going on. And God, you know, I, I'm gonna say God allowed this, you know, to go, go on. But then again, He knows that uh, the end of that consequence. And you take some people today, and then they continue to be mean or just misuse people and treat people wrong. They got a. Uh, 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 a bad ending too, mm -hmm. and they continue to do this. I've seen, like I gave you uh, a, a story one day, a gentleman that I went to school with, 
You need to trust me with bullets everywhere. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. He's bullet me. But I don't want to tell him. I don't want to tell him. But he messed with the wrong young man. Mm -hmm. He messed with the wrong young man. And his big brother came. And they shot him. He lived for a while, but he had to have a, a bag. Yeah, mm. he had to have a bag. And the doctor told him, you can't eat all this other stuff that you need, fried chicken, oh, barbecue, and everything. And you can't eat anyway. Yeah. But he too, he, 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 he was still hard-headed. He did anyway. He did anyway. Oh. I remember that story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he lived for a while, and he, he suffered. Because he, he mistreated people, and then he about people, you know, like that, and he comes to, and he jumped on that little old boy, little boy, jumped on it, and his big brother came and shot him. Mm -hmm. And he was ready to kill his big brother. Mm -hmm. You know what? Uh, that was terrible. And you, Pastor, you were saying that God uh, allowed it, allowed mm -hmm. things to happen during this, this era. Can I read the commentary that song? Uh, yes. Going back uh -huh. to what you were saying. It said, we may wonder at the significance of all of this, in which you were saying, However, let the reader understand that everything that happened to Israel and Judah had to do with the great plan of redemption. According, accordingly, all of these happenings, be they good or bad, proclaim to us the means of God in bringing redemption to the world, which would be through His Son and our His Son and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. All of these things play their part in this. Consequently. This means that all of these happenings are of great significance. Mm -hmm. You think God allowed those things. That's why we're doing that. Yes, God allowed. And, and even and today, that's what you said. God allowed things to, to happen today. You hear people say, why, why God allowed these kids to die? Why did he? Because a lot of them want to obey God. They want to follow God's word. They want to be obedient. And we got a lot of Christians. We just Christ to do the same thing. Don't want to uh, be obedient to God's word. And then when something tragedy happens, then they say, Why, God? Why? Well, you choose not to obey the word of God. You choose not to follow it. And that is right back to the consequences. Yes. Mm -hmm. right you back. make your choice, and now here's the consequences. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. But I think the same thing with me. When I used to drink, when I used to, yeah. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> it wasn't that wasn't important. <laughs> now, there's some things that happen too because it's brought on yourself and you violate a law. It's like yeah. the laws of the land. The land. Mm -hmm. If I run that stop sign, someone hit me, I kill somebody, mm -hmm. then I violate it. And so we can violate laws that God already is already here. Yeah. So then I tell people, God didn't do that. You violated a law. And the law is just like if I get up on this building. Mm -hmm. And if I get too close to the edge, the law of gravity is going to come right. into play automatic. Right. Mm -hmm. So I brought the law of gravity into play. And some people are here to say, well, I fell off the building, and God got my attention now, so I need to read my Bible more. <laughs> so God did it. So they put it on God. Yeah. <laughs> and that God had to, you know, when God yeah. broke, broke your back, because, you know, he's going to worry the time. Why would God do an unjust thing mm -hmm. like that? And he just like, oh. No, what we do is yeah. we violate laws in the yeah. natural, and we violate them in the spiritual, and those laws, that's what they do. God spoke them years ago. Mm -hmm. If you do, as a matter of fact, in Deuteronomy 28, he said, that it should come to pass, that if thou hearken and give it, then it should walk to the Lord thy God, and just as God commanded it. He said, I said, above all of, and, and, and all of these blessings and glory and old safety, uh -huh. or if you do so, this, yeah. then you'll get the curses. Yes. Yeah. So did God do it, or did you do it, or did you violate it, or did we violate it? Yeah. Condition yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 Flower in his rose garden. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If the is not being taught, the, I mean, I, I just, I, it's just made me. It's just made me when I hear this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then the pastors can hear it and they don't even try to say, you know, something to bring correction to the person. So 
See, if that person goes and say the same thing, then guess what? A hundred people hear that, and then they're going to go say it to a hundred people, and it's going to continue to be all. Yeah, I understand the free will and that there are consequences, but what about the kids that like to review? How, how, if you can control of everything, how do you feel about all that happening? Because that's because of kids. It goes back to the elder. The kids that are getting abused. Kids, you said kids are getting abused. Yeah, because they Why does God allow that? But that goes back to that goes back to the beginning of uh, Adam and Eve. That goes back to sin. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you have free will, you got a good person, they have the free will. You have a bad person, they have the good, they have free will to do stuff. So that's what those are bad people who hurt kids. That's that free will. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the parents go back to the body. Words and protection for the kids, the ones that haven't done it. How does he allow that to happen for the kids to get hurt? Because sin is in the world. Because, so, because you do have free so, will. You have free will. Free will. Free 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 yeah, unfortunately, that's a bad part of body is, but yeah. you have to go back to the Garden of Eden when sin came. Everything go way back to the Garden of Eden as sin. Just like you have a person who's good and they do good because of their will to do good, you have the person who do bad because their will to do bad. And when they're doing bad, who are they doing it to? A lot of times, innocent people. Mm -hmm. And that's the free will. So God, we, with man, we, we, the the and, and the Bible tells us that in Genesis. Okay, see, like they say, uh, like they say, so we, we live in a world of sin. We live part. in a world of sin. And, and God would not come up against man's will, whether he's doing yeah, good or whether he's doing bad. Right. God would not come up against man's will. Mm -hmm. oh, so, can I? Also, you know, things are going to happen. Bad things are going to happen to good people. Because we have to remember what bad did Jesus do again? Could you remind me? What bad did Jesus do? Good. But what happened to him? You see? But look all that came up against him. Look all that happened to him. He was slapped. He was spit on. I mean, he was called demon possessed. He was called all man of name. And, and you know, they put the crown of thorn. I mean, come on. All that he went through. And really and truly, he did nothing. It was it was just for our sins. Mm -hmm. And so just as how Jesus suffered, he went through things. But now his father not even his father, he himself, he could have just and the angels would have yeah. come. But he didn't do that. He went through the process. And sometimes bad things happen to good people. Yes. Yes. And when things happen, you know, yes, you may start to consider, well, oh, wait, you know, I think I need to read my Bible more. I need to. But it's not like if God say, well, I'm going to put this on you so right. you can do such and such. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I used to mm -hmm. tell people, I want to, just, it's what you said earlier, uh, this spring, that some of the pastors hear people saying, uh, why are you another cloud in the road? And the, and the pastor won't correct them. Now, I'm going to use myself. I have tried to correct people who want to argue with Oh, well, yes, sir. Pastor, yes, sir. Yeah, I think you and uh, my husband have green and two of y'all pastors there. So, and yeah, I remember that jump. And one of the uh, the second is awesome. I remember that. And one mm -hmm. of the ladies said, um, <coughs> "You can't remember you living more because you were there about the money." Oh, I, I think she they touched the bag. Oh, yes, they touched the bag. Yes, uh, they were told that if things. you don't have any money. Just touch the basket and God bless you. Yeah. Well, my husband had some, he couldn't just let that. He could eat just six or seven pastors on the rock just sitting there. Yeah. And this person out in the car, you know, here, he said that. And he, he should have said, that's not biblical. Yeah. He gave a scripture that was, yeah. you cannot correct, the, I mean, you cannot touch the basket. Yeah. That's not what God has said. He said, you have not touched the basket and you're blessed. Yeah. It may sound good, <laughs> but it's not. I think the young lady uh, uh, came back and uh, I kind of attacked them, sort of. Yeah, real attacked them. Yeah, yes, I mean, they came against them like, wow, yeah. I've never done that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wonder if that might have, because that's why uh, you have to, when you, that, I do, this is what I do now. I don't correct nobody around people. I may pull them to the side and then correct them like that. Because one gentleman at the church, he told people, y'all don't have to pray no more. And I said, what's wrong with Myself. So when he came to the school fish, I, I put him to the side. The said, "Pray always." Showed him the scripture. So he received it. 
And he went back up before the state closed and he said, Good evening. Uh, I was just told I was wrong for saying all The Bible said, Pray y'all from two to the church. And that's what I'm saying. Everybody not going to go back to correct themselves. Right. Everybody not going to do it. That's why I say, someone's going to argue with you. Argue with you about the thing. And then, go ahead, baby. You know, what Ms. Rhonda was saying about kids, but look at Jesus. For me, he was a baby and wanted to Yeah. For me, he was a baby and wanted to kill it. Um, you know. Well, sometimes he, um, yeah, you know, sometimes we want to know why things happen to us. But like I was saying, we just need to teach it. Yeah. And when they wish it that way, we want to take the oath of it. But one thing what God would do is try to, the Lord still would try to make you escape from that situation. Mm-hmm. But, you know, but sometimes the situation is, is, is still happening to you. But you, you still got your life. Now, back, back to the Bible study, these kings were wicked and doing things to people. Mm-hmm. But like I said earlier, even today, when people are doing wicked things, continue to wicked things, they got a bad end, a bad end. They have a bad end. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm, I don't know what the end because someone could suffer with cancer. Someone could, you know, uh, uh, die. We'll, we'll say it again. Like I said, the gentleman, he, he, you know, he had to have a, a colostomy bag. One, one, one guy, uh, uh, he just suffered from uh, uh, what you call that porosis of the liver. Yeah. And he, he was many diseases. And he died, he, he was wondering why he, why why him. But look at the life he led. And that's what I was using the example earlier when I said when I used to drink. My consequence is that the doctor told me if I didn't quit drinking, I will be dead within two years. Because my liver is black my liver or kidney, whatever it was, black as in this here. And it's harder to rock if you don't stop drinking. Now that was the consequence because it was my will to drink. Like we said, if we live in a sinful world. And even in the, in, the, in these kings, it's still a sinful world. Mm-hmm. And these kings are taking authority in, the, in their own hands, doing these things to people. And God sees all this, but when you get that, they're not going to get away with it. They're not going to get away with it. Even the evil people today, if they ain't going to get away, they're not going to get away with it. But, but let's go back to the Word of God. And we stopped at verse what? Uh, 20. So when we from 21 to 28. Second Kings, chapter 15, so we start with verse 21, and read all the way down to 28. Okay, I'm reading from the NLT. Okay. The rest of the events, I can tell I'm going to read it. Right the rest of the events of Manahan, Mahanam reigned, and everything he did are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. And when Menahanan died, his son, Hekeah, became the next king. Hekeah, son of Menahanan, began to rule over Israel in the 15th year of King Uzziah, of King Uzziah's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria two years, but Hekeah, did what was evil in the Lord's sight. He refused to turn from the sins that Jeroboam, son of Nebo, had led Israel to commit. Mm-hmm. Then Pekah, son of Ramelia, the commander of the of Pekiah army, conspired against him with fifty men from Galilee. Gilad. Pekah assassinated the king along with Argob and Aria in the in the city Satel Sat- of the palace of Samaria. And Pekah read in his place the rest of the events of Pekelhia reign and everything he did are recorded in the book of the history 
of the king of Israel. Pekah son of Ramelius began to rule over Israel in the 52nd year of King Uzziah's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria 20, 20 years, but Pekah did what was evil in the Lord's sight. He refused to turn from the sins that Jeroboam, son of Nebo, had led Israel to commit. During Pekah's reign, King Taglos Pelsia, I'm not sure, of Assyria <laughs> attacked Israel <laughs> again, and he captured the town of Erzo, Abel Beth, Manasha, Manaka, Ooh, Noah, Kedisha, and Harza. He also captured the regions of Gilad, Galilee, and all Nepal, and he took the people of Assyria as captive. Then Hoshea, son of Ella, captured, sorry, conspired against Pekos and assassinated him. <laughs> he began to rule over Israel in the 20th year of the <laughs> But let me just finish yeah, up the verse. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, in the twentieth year of Jotham, son of Uzziah. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. A lot of assassination was going on. My commentary said this is the first carrying away of the Israelites into captivity. Yeah. This is the first time of them being carried into captivity. Yeah. 
And if you, I think I've been very times when the singers came up and, uh, and they would be on the phone. You know, they take the take us off. I don't know, Sam, but I think I would have not wanted the leprosy. No, but, but you know what? What he did. Sometimes the love of God was easy. What he did was, was it like we were talking about the law that God had established. And the, uh, anyone who did that was supposed to have a big soul to that. Who tried to burn incense before the Lord and they were, if they wouldn't free. The penalty of that was death. And leprosy was a was a death penalty too. Because in time you you won't you won't die because all these ears and nose and stuff is falling off you. It it did say uh uh Leviticus chapter twenty two it said that he was the only one of the uh, Israel of kings who did not take the crown by, by force. You know, like mm -hmm. the other one doing yeah. assassination and stuff like that. He didn't take it by force. He was the only one. Yeah, that's what I, I was looking for. I, I read that in my commentary at home. I don't know but he, that. he still did either in the in the, in the, yeah, the yeah, law. So who is the who is the one that died from leprosy? That's, that's the, the first. That's the first thing. Oh, way up at the top. Yeah. What is it? A G A. -I -A oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, the first okay. Because yeah. yeah. I know I'm, I'm looking and I'm saying, but it's not Uzziah. Okay. Yeah, he's the first king in this chapter. chapter. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, so, up at the top. All right. Yeah. And the rest of them were killing one another. Yeah. The but with the exception of uh, uh, Tekahaya, he didn't do it by force. I guess he ended up being shifted in because it was his time to proceed on in that position. Because they, I read somewhere that he didn't uh, take that mm -hmm. crown by force. So, in other words, he didn't murder anybody. Uh, you know. I read that somewhere. Okay. So, what was that? Is verse 30? Yes, I'm going to read 31. Okay. I'm going to read it. Now, the rest of the acts of Pekka and all that he did, behold, they are written in the book of Chronicles. Chron Chron in the kings of Israel. In the second year of Papa, the son of Rina, king of Israel, J Jamanan, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 25 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 16 years in, in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jerash, the daughter of <coughs> Medak, and he did and he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. Now, I'm going to stop right there a moment. Each one of these kings, when they began, <laughs> the scripture says they did right in the eyes of the Lord. And you, and you know, you take it, when people first accept Christ, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> they had a deal. They had a deal. They wanted to do right. They started right. doing right in the Lord in the beginning. And all of a sudden, I'm going to blame the devil. <laughs> The devil comes in and turns their, turn their heart away from God. I mean, in today's time. And some of them say, you know, hey, God will forgive me. Yes, he will. But when you continue, continue, continue to do the same old thing, I mean, there's something wrong there. And it, but, you know, but it goes back to sometimes it's not even a devil. It's a consequence of the well, things I, they do. No, I, I, like, I just said it. Oh, okay. Because uh, uh, you're right. It's not a is out with it their own will. It got bad. People would open up. You start killing the yeah. kids, killing the pregnant women, and yeah. you know, taking money from the rich people. Well, see, I mean, I was, I was doing like some people, like some people do. They blame the devil. Blame it on the devil. Yeah, they blame the devil. But it's really their will. They start doing their own will, like these kings here, doing their own will. Yeah. And they think, you know, in order to, to please the people, because one of them killed, one of them killed, uh, killed the king, because the people didn't like it. And he won, he won them over because he killed this king and, him, and they, they, they brought him and they, they accepted him in. I forget which one it was. They accepted him in. And you find today that's what people put people down and talk about people. And the people say, you sure right, you sure right. And then they, they get him out and get him in. Because they find out he's not right. Oh, you're like King Saul, he's a people pleaser. Yes. And that's what some of these kings did. It says in uh, verse 34. And he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, according to all that his father, Uzziah, had done. 35. Nevertheless, the high place, this is where they had sacrificed, were not removed. 
They were not even. They, these kings still allowed the people to worship idols, other gods, making sacrifices to them. The people still sacrificed and made offerings on the high place. He built the upper gate of the house of the Lord. That is. Now the rest of the acts of Jeremiah and all that he did are they not written in the book of the Book of Chronicles of the kings of Judah. Thirty seven. In those days the Lord began to send the Rezan, Rezan, the king of Syria, and Saka, the son of Zimbe, against Judea. Jonah slept with his father and was buried with his father in the city of David. His father and Ebedek, his son, lived in his place. Now let's go back to what is it, jo Jotham? Yeah, Jotham? Jotham. And I think that was the last in his line. He said, I think he's the one that really was serving the Lord. Mm -hmm. He was the one. Yeah. He was the one that really served the Lord. This is right. If you go to um, second, um, second Chronicles 27 and 6. Yeah, that's good. Second Chronicles? Yeah. 27, starting at verse 6. You have it already? Yes, sir. Well, you want to read it? It says right here, so uh, Jotham became mighty because he prepared his way before the Lord, his God. And it says in Philippians uh, what a beautiful statement. And then it has like under seven says that the death of Jotham. Now the rest of the acts of Jotham and all his wars and his ways, both, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. He was five and twenty years old when he began to reign and reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. Eventually, and the parentheses it says, uh, evidently he was 41 when he died. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. says, and Jotham slept with his father, with an S, and they buried him in the city of David. Yeah. And they had his son reign in his stead. Amen. No, he died. Oh, that means he died. Died. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I want, to, I want to do the same thing, Brother Jolene. You said, what, what chapter is it? Yeah, it's 2 uh, Chronicles 27 and uh, 6. Yeah. Just pretty much show where he built the upper gates of the house of the Lord. Yeah. He was mm -hmm. doing something good. Let, yeah. let, me, let me read this statement here. I want to do the same thing. It says, so Jotham became mighty, mm -hmm. as he said, because he was carried his way before the Lord, before the Lord his God. He built, he built in, the building of this link between the palace and the temple was one of the two ways that he prepared his way before the Lord. What I was just now, there was a separation from the uh, palace to the temple, but he connected it together. He connected it together. That's what he said. The chief way that he prepared his way before the Lord. The high gate between the palace and the temple was better than a Chinese, than a China wall around his kingdom. The, the, the big wall that they, they got in China. It is, it is in communion with God the real prosperity and power is found. In other words, is it, he wanted to co continue to communicate with God. That's what he, he wanted. He, he connected it all together because there, there was a separation. But he built a, 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 like a hallway from the palace to the temple. The way he can go and communicate with God. Mm -hmm. When I seen that, I said, "Wow!" That, yeah. that, that. And that's what we have. We got the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God in us to, to keep us in contact, connected to God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Jeremy is the only one of all the Hebrew kings from far down again, again, whom God has nothing to record. In this, in this, this chapter is is in beautiful record with his name, Jehovah Perfect. In other words, Jehovah was right before the Lord. Yeah. He was right before the Lord. And I, I didn't read it here, but I believe he tore down all the, the idols that were there. 
we followed God. No, they never did. They never did. Yeah. You, you, want, you know what I want to say? Two pastors in this commentary going back to Queen. Uh, Menahem bridled the king of in, uh, Assyria in, uh-huh. order, in order that he not attack Israel. It goes back to he rather make a deal with the enemy versus seeking God yeah. to help him defeat. Yeah. He yeah. Would, would go to the enemy. So, you know, lack of prayer, lack of trust, lack, lack of uh, leaning upon God. Mm-hmm. And I know what you just said, lack of trust. Right. And you find people Lack today, of obedience. Yeah, you find people will run to other people instead of running back. What's worse than God? Instead of running back. Hey, can you help me with this? Hey, I don't know. Instead of going to God. <laughs> instead of going to God <laughs> and asking him. Asking to God. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, I did some study, but this, this here really, really got me. You know, these five kings, except the last one, the right before the Lord, really, really says God. The rest of them was full of pride, arrogance, and doing their own thing. And as I was saying this, I said, because the, the authority that they had, they abused the authority that they had, right? They abused the authority because the scripture says everyone who's in, who's in authority, God placed them. And you know what, Pastor, a lot of times when I'm, I'm reading the Bible, I uh, visualize, you know, I almost kind of put yourself in the setting, even though you really can't. But uh, even being like in the medical field, you can, you, you just, it's just so gruesome to think about a king that actually was ripping a yeah. kid from a woman, yeah. you know what I'm saying? A pregnant woman ripping a kid from her. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, what I'm just saying? You know, but you know, but you know, this was hundreds and thousands. You know, I mean, this was like a the king. The king ordered that to be done. Yeah, that was like very. He ordered that to be done. Yeah, he ordered that to be done. Yeah, he ordered that to be done. That's one of two hundred. Yeah, he ordered that to be done, and I'm thinking about the man that was doing that. Follow those orders. Follow those orders. Mm-hmm. The king had to go and, and, and I don't know why he was doing it. Because I, I was thinking. Stop the nation, that nation from But you know, if they didn't do it, then it would have been their head off. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. So. <laughs> we know why they did that. <laughs> yeah. They were ordered yeah. to, and that was those times, yeah. those ancient times. Wow. And I thank God I wasn't glad I was back then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you imagine the blood, all these, oh my God. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that. Yeah. Yeah, who? A girl who was on the news, they did a girl in Miami, and the person took the car. They were just caught up on her. Why are you angry doing it? Why are you angry doing it? Anyone coming to them, take up an altar? I have the basket up here. Anyone who's got it in here? Anyone who's got it in here? So next week, the pastor will be back. He's going to come with chapter 16. Okay. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you're counting all these different things. Yeah, and I, I first I counted six, but it was under five. It was five of them. Whereas four wicked ones and one for us. Yeah, it's really good. Amen. Well, we're going to close tonight. Thank you all for coming. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we will stand with you. We give you glory. We give you honor, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank, thank you for your word. Thank you, Father. Father, I ask you to go with everyone that's here tonight, Lord God. Bless everyone that is here tonight, Lord God. Take a home place, Lord God. There's no weapon coming against you, Lord God. And every time you rise up against you in judgment, that life can be in it. In Jesus' precious name. Mm-hmm. That peace the curse of God upon everyone here. Yeah. Father, I just want to thank you, Lord God, for those who want to come with us, able to make it, Lord God, within the earth of the Lord. Yeah. 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 In Jesus' precious name. Mm-hmm. We thank you, Father. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-